Welcome back. This is going to be part two of my restaurant review of restaurants in El Paso. All right, we're going to do a Watch Mojo style. So, this is going to be top 10 restaurants of El Paso. Coming in at number 10 is going to be West Texas Chop House. All right, this is located right off of Airway and Viscount. It's uh, connected to another restaurant called Famous Dave's. West Texas Chop House is a steakhouse. It has a very nice inside, already very aesthetically pleasing, uh, as well as great service. It has a very expansive menu with a bunch of different appetizers, soups and salads, and a lot of different entrees, including burgers. But it is a steakhouse, so it has plenty of steaks. What makes this one really unique, though, is that it has dry-aged beef. What essentially, dry-aging does, it tenderizes the meat by um, evaporating the water and that concentrates the flavor more and it concentrates the collagen in the meat basically evaporating that water it's kind of the same principle as laying cheese mold, um, ferment for longer it loses about 15 percent in size typically but that just adds more flavor it is debatable if the longer you age it after 12 days or 14 days if it'll have greater flavor but there are some people out there that will age it differently depending on the cut so if you do go to the West Texas Chop House, they do have uh, dry aged beef there for you. Definitely check it out, try it. Let me know what you think. A lot of people agree that it does taste better than regular steaks. Also, West Texas Chop House does have catering, all right? Overall, I will give this one a eight out of 10. Just so you know, eight out of 10 is the bare minimum for anything on this list. So everything after this is gonna be eight or higher. I do have one 10 out of 10 on this list, so make sure you stay to the very end to check it out. All right, coming in at number nine on the list is going to be Cereal Killers. We're taking a bit of a turn. This is actually a breakfast joint, all right? It's just like how the name sounds. They make a bunch of different cereals, but in very unique ways. This one's located at 2419 Stanton. I believe it is located near the university, so I can see um, where they would get a lot of the traffic from. When I went there, it wasn't super busy, but it is very nice inside, all right? It's not super big, but that is gonna be a given with what uh, a niche of a restaurant it is, especially with breakfast food. It's very different from other breakfast places. This specializes in cereal and cereal made things. So it's really cool and also has a lot of different milk options as well, which I'll talk about later. It's very nice and neat and it's got a lot of color to it. But also the food is interesting. So it's got a, um, like, these things called treats that are basically like these um, cake balls. They have these treats, so if you don't want like a whole bowl of cereal, because I'm not like big on breakfast. And then they also have milkshakes and they have different drinks. The drinks are typically like different types of milk as well. So they have a bunch of signature bowls that are already pre-made for you with the good combos that they have created, but you can also build your own bowl. All right, so you take whatever cereal you want, toppings, uh, different types of milks and flavors like that. All right, so I decided to get one of their signature bowls. I got the Banana Foster. Banana Foster's got this brown sugar banana milk, which I don't know how they make that, but it sounds really, it was really good. Cinnamon Toast Crunch, and then add some bananas with some rum flavor in it. It was delicious. Honestly, if I were going to university there and you know, I woke up and going before class, I'd probably go there like every day. It's kind of weird going to a restaurant to eat cereal. I don't <laughs> Oh yeah, that's pretty good. Oh my gosh. I haven't eaten cinnamon toast crunch in forever. <laughs> this is called unicorn milk and I got mazapan flavor. So we'll, we'll see how this one tastes. Very. Ooh. Oh my God, that is amazing. <laughs> oh. Ooh. So Cereal Killers is also going to be another 8 out of 10. It's a very nice restaurant, very unique. If you want something that you've never tried before, definitely check it out. Alright, coming in, number 8 on the list is going to be ranking at 8 out of 10 also, Queen's Table. This is strictly vegan cuisine, but a lot of people that have gone there that aren't vegan have told me that they really enjoy it, alright? And I tried it as well, and it is amazing. I, uh, <laughs> I mean, if you're a vegan or vegetarian or something, and you want some like really good food, something that you may have missed before, you know, 
Like I had a Philly cheesesteak. I was like, man, you know, it's been a long time since I had a Philly cheesesteak sandwich. Um, not that I ever really craved meat, but I did try it and oh, it was so good. There are so many other things I really want to try. They have like shrimp scampi, they got chicken alfredo, any type of food you can think of really. Uh, they, you know, they have different types of burgers, um, sandwiches, pastas, seafoods, stuff like that. And it's all vegan. It's all very vegan friendly. All right. The only thing I will say, it is a long wait time uh, when I went there, but I'm not sure if that is every time. You can also call ahead of time. They do have a phone number that you can call and they are located on 1830 Joe Battle Boulevard. All right, coming in on number seven on the list is going to be L&J Cafe, also known as the Old Place by the Graveyard. All right, this is located at 3622 East Missouri Avenue. It's a really nice hole-in-the-wall Mexican-style restaurant, all right? So if you want some really traditional Mexican food, which you can find almost anywhere in El Paso, but this is really good restaurant quality, all right? They have appetizers, enchiladas, all types of tacos and flautas, burritos as well. And then they do have a bunch of specialties, sides. One unique thing that they do have that more restaurants I'm seeing are starting to have is this thing called Touch Tunes. So you can connect to it through your phone, download the app, and then you can play whatever music. Cobble Joe's also had it if you want to check that out. Um, make sure you check out my part one of restaurant reviews at El Paso as well. As any restaurant really I found in El Paso, they had really good sauces and uh, salsa as well. Also, their con queso is amazing. That is something I truly am going to miss about being in El Paso because I'm not going to really find it around here, I, I doubt. Anything as good quality as that. What I personally tried was their avocado and potato tacos. Something I have never really heard of. I was very surprised by how good the potato tacos were. It just sounds weird, right? Having like potato and a taco. It's not like cut up like country style. It's kind of like more like hash brown style. They did have other really good food as well. All right, this one is also going to get an 8 out of 10. Coming in at number 6 on the list is going to be Carlos and Mickey's. Carlos and Mickey's is located on 12111, that's three ones at the end, Montwood Drive. Carlos and Mickey's has some really good food as well. It's varied as well. It's got some American food, like burgers and stuff like that, as well as some Mexican food. All right, Mexican food is really good. I And they also have amazing desserts. I had their fried ice cream, and that was just so scrumptious. I embarrassed myself in front of one of the servers, actually. It was really good. All right, their food is really good quality, uh, very nice atmosphere. They also do have like these huge margaritas there, which are really good as well. And you can actually take them home too. So they can put a little thing, a little cup for you, and you can take it home. It's unique. It's it's nice style. They do have live music as well sometimes. All right, so this one also gets another eight out of 10. All right, coming in at number five, all right, we're halfway through our list, is gonna be Border Burger Bar, also just known as Border Burger. All right, Border Burger is honestly one of my favorite burger places other than Toro Burger within El Paso. All right, this one is so unique. It's got internationally crafted burgers uh, from around the world. All right, it's got things from the US all over. It's also got ones called the Japanese, the Korean. The Korean's really good. It's got, it's a kimchi burger, so it's gonna be like pretty spicy. So is the Japanese, a little bit, it's got wasabi, but it's not too bad. Well, it's got wasabi nori chips, my bad. And then they have their signature one, is called the Border Burger, which is honestly, I think that's the best one on the menu. And if you're vegan, they do have uh, options for you. You can substitute the patty with a portobello mushroom, which I find is amazing. Although it can be kind of messy because that does slide around a lot, especially with all the stuff that they put on it. So much different sauces, cheeses, and stuff like that if you want cheese. They have these things called kimchi fries, which I really recommend. Those are really good. And I'm just, I love spicy food, so definitely check that out. It's really good though. I do recommend it. If you love burgers and you want something that's really good, then check this one out. Even if you don't, aren't very, um, if you don't want to explore your palate, <laughs> we'll use that term, or you're not into very exotic stuff, they do have just traditional Texas burgers as well, or right? like a Swiss American burger. This is located on 3329 Fort Boulevard. It also, uh, funny enough, I found this out, but they do have a couple locations in Colorado. All right, 
So I'll, I'm gonna try it. I've had these burgers before, but we'll see how good this one is this time. All right. Mmm. Oh, that's so good. It just has um a lot of, like garlic aioli, avocado, tomato, onions, and mushroom. The buns are soft. It's just really good all around. And then try the fry. Also really good. Like it. Mm -hmm. Nice and crispy. Not too soggy. Not hard, not burnt. Good seasoning. Border Burger Bar also gets an 8 out of 10. This will be my last 8 out of 10. From here on, it's going to be 9s and above. All right, coming in at number four, my bad. This is another eight out of 10. This is gonna be Cattleman's Steakhouse, all right? Cattleman's is actually a large family style restaurant on a working ranch, all right? So all the beef and steaks that you get from here are actually from the cows on the ranch. So you know it's really fresh meat. This is gonna be pretty far away. I'm just gonna let you know that. It is located on 3450 S. Fabens Carlsbad Road, in Fabens, Texas. If you go to El Paso, everybody's gonna tell you that you need to check it out. I personally don't think it's super great. It's not the best steakhouse I've been to, but it is really good. I don't. I think it's worth going at least once to check it out, maybe a couple times. But it's not something I would go like all the time. They do have some very unique features though, which is why I'm kind of bumping it up to four. It does have a zoo as well that you can see which is really unique i found it pretty cool they also apparently do have a maze playground some party facilities if you don't want any steaks or anything like that they do have a salmon as well fortunately there is nothing there for any vegans i just went there to try it out i did try their salmon i will admit our right, one thing that cattleman's does have are huge steaks if you saw my part one of restaurant review it's talking about great american steakhouse i did lie it wasn't 74 ounces, I think that was a mess up. All right, that's a huge steak. It's not that big. But this one, they have even bigger steak. They have a cowgirl, which is one and a half pounds. That's if you're not willing to take on their cowboy, which is two pounds. There's a two pound steak. And that's just the app, that's just the main entree, all right? That also comes with a side dish as well, which you can get like a loaded mashed potato, which is also huge. It is pretty pricey though. Everything on that menu is gonna be pretty expensive. Go and check Hellman's out at least one time, and then let me know what you guys think of it. All right, Kiki's is ranked number three out of 10 on this list because it is amazing Mexican quality food. Another hole in the wall restaurant, all right? Just kind of like LJ's, but even better. All right, this is coming in nine out of 10. All right, this is gonna be our first nine out of 10. And from here on, it's gonna be nine out of tens and above. All right, the very last one's gonna be 10 out of 10. So make sure you stay, to check that one out. Kiki's is located on 2719 North Pedras. Their hours have changed quite a bit because of COVID. So it's very limited now. I definitely recommend it, all right? If you wanna check it out, it's not very pricey at all. You can get like a full course meal for like maybe like eight, 10 bucks or something like that, pretty cheap and it will fill you up and then you can get that like the same amount of food at a, like a steakhouse or something like that and it'll be like five or four dollars even more than what you're getting so this is really good food at a cheaper price all right very authentic mexican food so definitely check it out it's coming in at number two all right this is now nine out of ten all right this one's rated nine out of ten so check it out sunny sushi steak and seafood this is really good restaurant they have all types of different sushi rolls in there. Very great variety, and the food is amazing. Their uh, volcano roll is especially good, and so is their, uh, I think it's their crazy roll, is what I tried. Also, the inside is just so awesome, all right? It's so aesthetically pleasing. They have these lanterns as the lights on the ceiling. It's a very nice Japanese vibe going on inside, as well as you go to uh, look at the bar, there's a lot of different knickknacks and there's Japanese swords uh, on the, hanging on the wall, which I found just super awesome. So you know that the owner put a really a lot of time and devotion in this. One thing that I find very unique about it, all over their walls, they have pictures of people that have never tried sushi before and they come there and try sushi for the first time. So if you never tried sushi, check out Sunny's. Service is really good as well. And they do have 
really good sake. You never had sake, it's essentially rice wine, and they have all different types, all right? They have like really sweet uh, sake, uh, you can get hot or cold, however you really want it. Go ahead, try oh, it. Am I trying it? Yeah, try it. Okay, okay. Struggling. <laughs> How is it? <laughs> like the spiciness level is slightly lower than hot Cheetos or tacos. <laughs> That's really good. I love it. Like, and the crispiness is just amazing. Like the way that there's like that crunch in there, like really soft at first, and then that crunch, and then that sauce, just complements it so well. Let's try this actual roll by itself. Oh, that's good. I like it. Yeah, it's not very spicy at all. It's like, it would be like if you ate a bunch of hot Cheetos together. Mm -hmm. It's like a creamy... Cholula? Or... Well, I was thinking more like a buffalo kind of sauce. Oh, yeah, out, yeah, yeah. But like mixed with like mayonnaise. And of course, if you're not a sushi guy, there are a lot of different options as well. They have teppanyaki, they have rice and noodles, they also have different types of appetizers, hot or cold. So if you're not going to try the sushi, even though you should, there are other things that you can have as well. Alright, now before we get into our top pick, we're going to go into some honorable mentions here, alright? First, I'll talk about Charcoaler. Charcoaler is a really good, very unique restaurant. All right, it's gonna be seven out of 10. It's a more traditional kind of restaurant dine-in uh, drive-through uh, that you don't see anymore these days. So it's kind of unique a vibe to it. Unfortunately, there's a lot of construction going on right now with it. So it is kind of hard to get into, but definitely go check it out. All right, they have their own house wine as well, which I found really weird. So they do serve alcohol there, which is kind of cool, a plus for me. Uh, I did like their food. I like their onion rings personally. Oh, and they do have a vegan option, all right? They have a black bean burger uh, substitute that you can get there. So that's really unique and cool. If you don't want to dine in though, they do have a drive through as well. I got their a combo meal of fries. I got a black bean uh, veggie burger that they had. And then I'm trying their ha uh, house wine as well. Let's try the burger. And this one I got with the chili and cheese um, on it, so. Green chili and cheese. That tastes good. And since Turner over there is my cameraman's getting tired, I'm gonna try this wine now. All right, let's see how this is. It's very strong. It's actually pretty nice. I like it. It's a nice dry wine, drier red wine. All right, another honorable mention is gonna be Village Inn. All right, Village Inn has a personal place in my heart. If I could, I would rate this like a 12 out of 10, but can't do that it would be unfair to the other restaurants legend is more of a chain honestly it's more of a west coast thing all right i grew up with it in alaska it's really good food i find it better than like denny's or ihop or anything like that it's gonna be the same kind of style though all right another honorable mention is gonna be ardovino's pizza they actually have five different locations within el paso i went to their location number four which was on zaragoza all right they do have other ones on Cincinnati Avenue, North Razor Drive, uh, Sean Haggerty, and East Sunset Road. But this is going to be a really good place for some pizza if you just want to sit down and have some good pizza. Alright, something that's not, you know, like Domino's or Papa John's or anything like that. They do have some mini calzones as an appetizer, and they have a really big wine selection. When I went there, I had their margarita pizza. I just found it really nice. All right, this gets a 7 out of 10. Next honorable mention is going to be Famous Dave's. That's the one I was talking about right by West Texas Chop House. All right, located on Airway. It's going to be your more traditional ribs, burgers, and fries, and stuff like that. I gave it a 7 out of 10, mostly just because it's not very unique. It is good food. I haven't personally been there, but I've heard it's really good. It also does catering as well. And then the last two honorable mentions I'm gonna have are gonna be Sucasa and noodles and dumplings. Sucasa is gonna be your more traditional Mexican food, all right? If you want something that is like Kiki's or L&J's or you found those really good or looked really good, then you definitely have to check out Sucasa as well. And then noodles and dumplings is going to be your more traditional Chinese food. I haven't personally been there. I did have a friend that worked there though, and she said that it was really good. All right, and then now, at the number one spot, 
rated 10 out of 10 is, drum roll please, blah, 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 blah. Bellicera. All right, Bellicera Trattoria, or Trattoria Bellicera is awesome, phenomenal. I've gone there many times, and if you go there just once, you're gonna wanna come back, all right, trust me. This is located on 3512 North Yarborough. It is Italian, but they have so many different things. Service is amazing, and then when you step inside, it's like you're walking in a little bit of Italy, all right? They have the statues, the architecture, just the design and everything just makes you feel like you're really at an Italian restaurant. When I visited it to record for this video, I was actually able to finally go upstairs because I've never been upstairs before that and that was a really cool experience so no matter what if you're on the lower on the first floor or the upper floor it's both amazing I honestly really like the upper floor though it was just oh it's such it's awesome and just looking out over the balcony you know it's just amazing like a great view and whatnot their appetizers themselves are just amazing bruschetta is really good the polenta that is amazing it's a aromatic yellow corn um delicacy is what they describe it as it's kind of like you take cornbread and like a sponge cake and you kind of mix them together and it's super super soft it melts in your mouth and it's topped with your choice of gorgonzola or uh, bologna or bologna, <laughs> bologna sauce the pizzetta fresca is actually really good too pizzetta fresca is essentially like a margarita pizza except it's not a pizza it's just a really thin crust soups are also really good I've had the um, the crema de pomodoro. Well, yeah, maybe we should talk Italian for this one, eh? The, it's basically like a cream of tomato. Uh, what are some Italian words? Arrivederci. And then the minestrone. That's a vegan soup. Ah, vegana. I don't know Italian, but that's really good. And the lobster bisque. That's also very good. I've heard. And then you have the salads. The insalates and then the top it off. <laughs> I don't know why I slipped into like a New Jersey accent there. To top it off, man. No, that's Australian. God, I can't keep my accents. We have the ravioli rossi. Alright, these are actually all really good. Uh, the raviolis, amazing. The ganoche. Ganoche is really good. All their pasta selection is just awesome. Like, if you ever had Italian food, they just are gonna blow your mind away with this. You're gonna be like, oh, I've had lasagna before. No, you haven't until you've tried them, okay? Their lasagna is phenomenal. They do have an option for a vegetarian one too. It's just cheese, no meat sauce in it. And then of course, you can also create your own pastas. So that's a really nice option right there. They have amazing different sauces here, all right? So they have your traditional marinara and Alfredo and stuff like that. And then you can also do olive oil or pesto. Pesto is going to be a $2 charge. But then they also have other ones called like Aurora, Arribiata, the Portofino, Smachiziana, Punanesca. So I can't remember exactly which one, but the I think it's the Machiana or the Putanesca. One of those is kind of like a seafood base. And then the Arribiata is actually a spicy sauce. So it's kind of like a spicy marinara sauce. So if you want to add some spice to it, do that. It It's actually really good too. And because it is an Italian restaurant, well of course we have the pizza. All right, they got pizza, you can build your own. Then they have the traditional uh, margarita and they also got the quattro stagioni. And then the pesce, uh, that's seafood options. And then if you want something a little bit more meaty, they also have the polo and carne. And carne just means meat. The warm chocolate cake, I've had that dessert, and that's what I was eating right here, is amazing. Oh my gosh, it is so sweet though. If um, if you just want, if you don't want it as sweet, you can just eat the cake itself, and that's not as bad. It's just the sauce, the cherry sauce around it. Ooh, that is like super sweet. I couldn't even handle it all. <laughs> All right, this dessert is so amazing that I just can't stop. It's good. It's really good. This is an amazing restaurant, all right, guys. It's definitely worth checking out. You need to go there. 
for sure. This is my top pick out of everything in El Paso, but uh, also the head chef, Giuliana Leodini, I hope I'm pronouncing that right, is actually is from Verona, Italy, so you know that this is legit food, all right? And I keep attesting to it, but I'm serious. If you want really amazing food, and you like Italian food, then you need to check this out. All right, guys, that's it for this video of my top 10 picks of El Paso. There are actually a couple others in there that I wasn't able to fit in, and that's why I put them in this first video right here, and you need to check it out. Toro Burger, Track 1, and Teppanyaki Grown Buffet are also really good picks that are reviewed in this one, so check out that. And then look forward, I'm going to make a separate video on the best on the restaurants at the fountains. So there is actually a 10 out of 10 pick from the fountains that I went to. All right. Hope you guys enjoy this and I'll see you in the next one.